Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection as usual. Today, my very biased collection about cubes, um, in a certain sense, obviously, there won't be too many cubes. There will be a cube, actually, and there will be a theorem, but it's mostly about the philosophy behind Hamming distance, which is quite a general, kind of quite a general approach, as we will see, works in quite some generality, but then is most important, at least uh, from its history, uh, in form of error detection for sending messages from, let's say, one computer to another. Uh, and usually sending messages is always a little bit tricky, uh, like think about cryptography or something. Uh, if, if a third party doesn't want to read it. But in this case, it's tricky in the sense of that we send a message, a very simple one, hello world or something, but it might come out on the other side very distorted and we want to recover uh, what the message originally was. And the well, the main idea is the following. So I will use an alphabet. What is an alphabet? An alphabet, I will call it A, is just a random collection of symbols that I would like to use. So um, it is, well, let me find the correct color here. Let me use black. It is something like A, B, C, or anything you actually want. And words in the alphabet are just concatenation of those symbols, so B, B, A, A. C A B or something. So that's a word a word of length seven in my very silly alphabet, just consisting of A, B, and C. And um, the idea of using alphabets um, comes from formal languages. Um, so formal language is now just something built on an alphabet, if you want. And the idea is that formal language kind of interpolates between what a human likes and what a machine likes. So a human, so I like this picture here. So a human certainly is a big fan of natural languages. A computer machine is not so much a big fan of natural languages. Um, nowadays we can do actually pretty well. A computer can somehow understand human language. It's still far away from perfect. Um, so let's just say for this video, a computer doesn't like really natural languages. So how should a human and a machine commute, uh, communicate? Well, a machine certainly likes those guys. It likes it very, very, very much. In particular, this one, for example. Um, but a human, well, some humans probably do. But it's certainly much harder than natural language in the sense that fewer humans understand it. And the formal language is kind of a good intersection where we can still express a property uh, that's what humans like to do, and the uh, computer has still a good chance to understand it. Uh, less philosophically speaking for this just video, I said, uh, the only thing we need to know is that we have an alphabet and we have words in our alphabet. And the Hemming space, which I will just call H, although the notation HN would be more appropriate, is just the set of all words of a fixed length N. Right? So there are many aiming spaces, and I just denoted by H because I'm lazy, but it actually should be HN, where N is the length of a word. So we'll see an explicit example later. So that's a space. It's called a space well, right now. Just an alphabet, words of a fixed length, collect them, that's a Hamming space. And why is it useful? Well, let's see. So the Hamming distance is a distance on that space. And it works as follows. So here are the first three examples, my alphabet, contains, well, some use the usual letters. Here, my alphabet is binary, so only one or zero, zero, one. And here, my alphabet contains the, the numbers from one to nine, I guess. Uh, and all of these are then words. Um, this is a word of length seven, for example. This is a word of length uh, seven, I guess, for example, as well, in the corresponding Hemming spaces. And the distance between two words in those spaces, so note that this is also of length seven, for example, and this is also of length seven, and here length four and length four, so you always compare words of the same length, is just you go along the word and you check whether the symbols are the same or not. So, and if they are not the same, you count one. So here you have four symbols, zero, 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 and four symbols, one, 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 so the distance is four. So here the distance is three because it differs exactly in those three symbols. And we like to think of this as being an estimate of error. So what does it mean? Let's say I'm sending this message here. I'm sending out uh, this one, but you receive this one here. Well, it could, could happen. So sending messages is always a bit tricky. There might be some fluctuation somewhere and you actually receive this one. And it's of Hemming distance three. That's quite far away. So you probably won't be able to tell anymore what I was trying to tell you, 
But if the hamming distance is very small, as we will see in the next example, we might be able to, to kind of correct the error. You just see, oh, oh, this symbol just went wrong. And actually the message was whatever X. So um, we really think of this distance, a very simple idea as an estimate of error in sending messages. And it's really just counting the number of different symbols. So let me move to the probably the one that is most important for the computer, the binary example, where my alphabet is just 0, 1. So I only have strings with 0 and 1s. And here, this is having space h3. And h3 has now words of length 3. And the Hamming distance on the Hamming space, well, is exactly given by the cube. There you go. There you have a cube in the sense that I draw an edge between two words, if and only if they differ exactly by one symbol. Right. So Hamming, so this is kind of the Hamming distance uh, visualized on a cube. And the idea is now the following. So we have a certain subset of the Hamming space, which people usually call code words. In my example, the code words will be those. Um, and it works as follows. So we think of sending zero or one, so one bit as uh, a message. And of course, it, zero could come out as zero or one, and one could come out as zero or one. So as soon as there is there an error, there's an error, we have no chance to detect the error, right? So there's no way to detect the error in any way. So if we just send out zero or one. And the idea is now that in sending out, instead of sending out zero or one, we actually send out zero, zero, zero or one, one, one. Okay, and what does this mean? Well, this means, for example, if everything in Hamming distance one from one, 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 if you receive by coincidence zero, one, one, this is Hamming distance one from this one, and you know that you only could have received this one or this one, it's quite likely um, that actually you've received the wrong message, but it's quite likely that actually it was this one. So you can actually correct the error in this case. The same here. Right, so if I receive something like this one here, this is close to this one, so it's quite likely that I was actually sending out zero, zero, zero. And in this case, we have a chance of error correction. So it's a way better uh, error rate of error correction than if I would just send zero or one. So I said again, we send a bigger amount of information, but it will only be a subspace of H. And so we can now use the distance. We might receive very different uh, results from H. And we can now use the distance to kind of, it's in some sense, it's still a guess, but it will be a well, very well-informed guess um, what actually the original message was, right? So if, if you receive any of these four here, it was probably 111. If you receive any of these four here, it was probably 000. zero, zero. That's the main idea. And the theorem, well, my favorite theorem, should have a theorem, is in very generality, any alphabet, the Hamming matrix is a, uh, the Hamming distance is a metric on H. So you could always use that to do some well metric type, type stuff on alphabets, which is pretty good. So I show you another example of Hamming code on the next slide. It's a famous 7-4 Hamming code. Um, again, coming from error detection, but Hamming distance nowadays has a, a lot of applications. So one that I found recently and I found very exciting, so more very surprising, um, linked in the description is in, uh, you can have geomet uh, ge geometric, genetic distance is also measured by Hamming distance on where the Hamming space is kind of the word of DNA codes. So DNA, Gettica, yeah, so some alphabet, some symbols, and you use the Hamming distance to measure geometric distance at genetic distance. I'm way too much of a mathematician here, geometric distance, genetic dif distance. And you can use that to kind of group things according to genetic distance, which is a pretty cool application of this idea of a Hamming space, which is a metric, by the way. Um, anyway, so let's discuss the Hamming 4.7. So back to error correction. And it works as follows. So 7.4 is the following. I send a four-bit message. I want to send a four-bit message. And I blow it up into a seven-bit message, right? So I said again, uh, blowing it up gives us a way to potentially correct errors. So that's what we do. We blow it up from four to seven. Um, and it works as follows. So you put your four letters into the Venn diagram. So it's quite a Venn diagram, what you see here. So here's a zero. This is a really bad color, I guess. Uh, let me make this black here. Um, and well, the next one may be orange. 
it was really a, again a stupid choice but anyway uh let's do the next one green you put it here and let's do the last one whatever purple so we put it here so you put them in the venn diagram and then the three remaining numbers for the message you actually want to send are determined by the following property so the, the, the sum of those two numbers is this one the sum of those two numbers modulo 2 is this one so 1 plus 1 modulo 2 is 0 the sum of those two numbers is this one and the sum of everything is this one and this determines my three additional numbers and i will send this message instead of the top one so i get then a subspace of having seven in this case h7 um of certain words and there will be certain Exactly, again, it will be seven-dimensional hypercube, and we can kind of uh, use Hamming distance to detect potential errors. So if just one digit here flips, for example, it's very likely that it uh, was this one to begin with, and so on. So that's the whole idea of this Hamming distance. And the point is kind of to find the right balance between um, sending the original string and blowing it up. So of course, you can just blow four up into uh, one billion or whatever, I can't write 1 billion, so let's say 1,000. But then you need to send out a way bigger, way, way bigger message. It, it's easier to detect errors, but your message is way bigger. And I think in practice, at least historically, it turns out that the 7-4 ratio is pretty good. So error detection is reasonably well, and you don't blow it up too much. right? So, um, so that's why 7-4, I guess, is so famous. Um, and also, it fits very nicely into a Venn diagram. Okay, so Hamming code for error correction is the following idea. Instead of sending um, a small message, well, you send out a blown out message. Uh, careful not to blow it up too much because, for well, practical reasons, you don't want to send out a really, really huge message. But anyway, for the bigger blown up message, you can use Hamming distance for error correction, which I personally think is a really cool idea. But Hamming distance is this metric on the Hamming space. It's just an alphabet in general, and it's way more applications uh, with a funny one for geometric distance that I kind of showed you. As I said, link is in the description. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope to see you next time.